Okay, so how's my hair? Hi everybody, this is Larry Randolph with Missouri Turner, and I'm with one of my fellow club members, my friend Steve Dore, from down here in Joplin, Missouri. And not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, which by the time you see this, it will be last Saturday or two Saturdays ago. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, he's going to do a demo for our club on the Glue Boost finish. Um, you've done the CA finish for years. Yes. And you are now, let me do this so they can hear you well. Okay. Now your microphone, now we're sounding, we can hear Steve now. <laughs> um, no, you've done the CA finish for years and you've switched to Glue Boost. Yes and no. Okay. There's, there's advantages and disadvantages to both of them. Okay. Glue Boost is a very expensive product. I mean, you get two ounce bottle for $15, you know, and so you're, the way I've been doing it, and I'm, I'm continuing to experiment to try and learn different ways to maybe be more efficient with the quantity of glue that I use. But I do know that the, the glue boost, if you've got to go back and patch because you've sanded through the, the finish, it's a great patch. Easier to it, do than a standard easy, CA. Yes, yes. Uh, the, the CA that I use is... Um, Easy bond, and I can get a 16 ounce bottle for, you know, 25, 26 dollars right in that range, and so there's a, a big difference in the price range. Right, right. You know, Sounds like it. Yeah. And and so, you know, the if you're doing very small things like pins and things like that, I think the glue boost does a really good job. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do it much quicker. Things like that. Their spray is really good because you don't get that clouded effect that you do sometimes with CA, right. with C, with CA and right. their accelerator. But um, they're both very good products, and they both can accomplish the same thing. It's just how much do you want to spend, and also you know um, learning how to become more effective in the application process. And that's still it's one of those things you're continuing to learn and grow mm -hmm. as you're going through this process. You know, like everything else we do as wood turners, the more you do it, the better. Yeah, the better you absolutely. Sure. And, and you're always looking for ways to improve what it is you're doing. Right. So you, right. you can do it more efficiently. Okay. All right. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to do some, uh, some B-roll shots, and then we'll also do some live shots with Steve here while he's explaining to you how he applies. Uh, you're going to do dye as well as. Yes. Okay, yes. excellent. So um, some of this may not make it for YouTube, but we'll give you the highlights of it and uh, hope you enjoy. Yeah. And, and if I can say one thing, when I use the, the Glue Boost or CA finish mm -hmm. on my turnings, I only use it on those uh, turnings that I have used to, that I've dyed. You know, I'll, I'll start out most of the time with black, dye it black, sand it back, and it's highly figured wood because that's, to me, that's when, with that almost glass-like finish, it really helps that grain to pop. And, and it, it gives really- Gives you more of that cat's eye effect. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's your toys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. all right, well, we'll, uh, we'll reset the cameras and carry on. This is a piece of uh, big leaf maple, uh, curly big leaf maple. And I, I really like to use uh, big leaf maple, whether it's a burl, curly, fiddleback, um, quilted because it has really nice figure to it and that really pops when you go through the stain process. Now I use uh, chestnut spirit stain which uh, you can get at Craft Supply or at um, oh, uh, the Texas, the big woodworking store in Texas. They've got them and I learned about this from uh, Jimmy Clues when my wife and I took a uh, workshop out at his place in Las Vegas. So, uh, so what I start out doing here, this has been, uh, I've hollowed this out. It's been uh, bleached. One of the things that I've, uh, in looking over a lot of different articles and things like that, they recommend bleaching the wood 
because that way you get a truer color. There's a lot of yellows in woods and things like that. So if you put a blue on there, a lot of times it'll have a green hue to it because of the yellow what, in there. What bleach are you using? Are you have uh, you made your own or used no, Bailey's? No, uh, the one I I've used so far has been the Zinners. Okay. Uh, two part bleach, and then I picked up another one that, um, and I haven't used it yet. That you just uh, it's a crystal that you add water to. So I've got to try that one yet. Hmm. And uh, but it's it's one of these things. It's a two part. You put one part on. Let it soak real good, then you, and I use a foam brush. Mm -hmm. and then you put the second part on, you know, to to uh, really get rid of you know light in the wood, and then you let it set overnight. Then you lightly sand it to get rid of the residue and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I do, I start out, as I said, I dye this black. Turn this down low. And I'm not necessarily concerned so much when I do this that it's a real, uh, what I would call a high quality uh, stain or dye that in terms of the, the color because I'm going to sand this all back. The, the purpose of dyeing it black is what I do is um, I want the black to be in the open port areas of the grain so that uh, it really helps that area to pop uh, once you add your primary color on top of that. But what I do like to do is I'll take my paper, a new paper towel here and I'll turn this on and I'll burnish it. And what that does, it just helps dry it and kind of help set it into uh, the wood. You'll notice too that I have down here just an old piece of corrugated uh, plastic that I use here. I can use it as a table uh, with my uh, robust. I don't have to worry about water on my wave because it's stainless, but on, on another wave like the, my wife's uh, jet, you've got to worry about water on it. Or moisture. So this works out really well, especially as we go through the process later on as we're uh, sanding it and uh, polishing it up and everything. Um, now, my, my question was, um, you're talking about using spirit stains, black dye. I know you and I have used several different things. I use it as well. Have you tried other dyes that maybe people already have that you like as well? Um, I will use the I can never think. Phoebings? Phoebings. The leather dye? Yeah, U.S. Marine yeah. leather dye. I use that whenever I'm ebonizing my finials and things like okay. that. Okay, okay. But I have not used it uh, whenever I'm trying to do this. Okay. Uh, I like the um, spirit stain because it is uh, pretty color fast. You know, it, it doesn't fade in the sunlight yeah. and yeah, things there like are, that. There are some a lot of dyes that will turn gray on you or yeah. almost black. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's, that's, I haven't gone out and experimented a lot, but uh, just from what I've read and, you know, um, talking to different people, spirit stains about the best mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. I know Craft Supply has their own brand. Mm -hmm. They sell Artisan. Yeah. Artisan. Yeah. Um, I did read an article on uh, that was comparing the, several different stains and they had spirit stain at the top. Artisan was down a little bit, but yeah. One of the things too, as you can see, I wear gloves, plastic gloves when you stain. If, unless you want your fingertips to be colored, you know, you, you'll need some kind of a glove to keep them from getting too, too stained. Okay, what, what I do now, once that it has been dyed black, I'll come along with my sander and I will sand this off. I'll start with 120. And normally when I'm doing this, I've got a dust mask on, I've got my dust collection going, uh, but with the video camera right now, I don't want to add that extra noise.
you can see right now that I'm starting to get rid of a lot of that black that has been in there. Um, it's not, I think the figure's more on some of this other side. Now, Steve, you're using 120. What are yeah. you going to go up to before you put on your next color? I'll go to one, uh, 400. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll take it okay. all the way up. And sometimes uh, you can see it can gunk up the sandpaper oh, yeah. pretty quick. Yeah, real quick. But this isn't as bad as some of them. What, what I'm doing here is I'm sanding some of these spots. Those are some large open grained areas. And what I'm trying to do is eliminate a real dark spot. You know, I'm not going to get rid of it all the way, but like here, I've got a little streak here. It just would be unattractive, you know. So I just go back here, try to get rid of some of that. because it would look too much like a tool mark. Mm -hmm. Now, like you told us, when you started this, um, you're going to take off almost all of it. Yeah. And the, the reason for that is what is left embedded in those, uh, those figured grains are going to pop more and, and hold it better than the grain that's more straight, right? Yes. Yeah. And just what you said, what I found when I've, when I've done it as well is, is if you don't get those lateral lines out, it looks like a sanding line or a tool mark. Yeah. For the newer turners, they're probably thinking, boy, this takes a long time. Yeah. And the bottom line is, yeah, sometimes it does take a It takes longer to uh, sand and finish a piece, a lot longer on a good piece like this, than it does just to turn them. And one of the, the things wood. about dyeing them, any imperfection in your surface, you know, a scratch, uh, a tool mark, pops. It yeah. really shows yeah, up. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, that's one of the advantages of first dyeing it black because you get to see those <laughs> yeah. and correct them. Yeah. Yeah, how many, uh, how many pieces over the years have you uh, got to the point where you thought you were finished sanded, uh, sanded and you get to finish on it and then you take it into sunlight? Yeah. And that's when you see the error. Yeah. And, you know, like I was just working on a piece and I thought I had it all done and I had already put the CA on it, hollowed out the inside. It was a, a little dish. Took it upstairs to show my wife, and she goes, you got a, a little nick here. And so I had to come down, re reverse it, reverse it, yeah, 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 and get it all taken care of. Now, just so those that are watching know, uh, I suggested that Steve put on his dust mask but he didn't offer me one, so I may die of secondhand sanding. <laughs> Do you want a dust no, mask? No, I'm fine. I just, I just wanted to point that out that <laughs> if for some reason you never see another YouTube video. Are you here hacking in the background? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, dust masks are a must. Dust masks are a must. Yeah. Get my, you know, the dust has affected me. I can no longer speak the English language. <laughs> I started with uh, 120 grit paper and then uh, worked my way. I, I did 120 and 180, did probably a couple sheets on each one of those. Uh, then worked my way up to 400. And what I'm doing now is just taking a little 
uh, denatured alcohol and helping to get rid of some of that uh, dust that's on the surface. And the denatured alcohol will also help smooth out and soften any of those lines that might be, you know, in there that you weren't able to, to completely get rid of. Well, and it'll also help you raise the grain a little bit yes. for your next grit, right? Yeah. Not, maybe not quite as much as water, but definitely raises the grain a little bit for yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. And you can see I still got a little, I would, it was getting uh, a little of the, the dye on the, on the cloth here. Okay, what I think we're ready to do now is take the green dye that I'm going to use and I'll come along and I'll put that right on top of uh, what we have here. And again, it's the chestnut spirit stain and it's always advisable to shake it up. You know, get it good and shake, shaken. And this does have uh, a little bit of... Um, shellac in it. So just an FYI for you. Helps it set just a little bit quicker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Along with uh, alcohol. Now, denatured alcohol. Yes, yes. Not, okay. It's not moonshine or, okay. you know. Well, for those that weren't listening earlier, maybe we didn't, maybe we didn't tell them where you live. Uh, Steve and uh, Valerie live here in Joplin, Missouri, which is uh, right at the corner of the four state area, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri. So there are a lot of uh, white lightning runners around here. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that it was the right kind of alcohol, Steve. Yep. Now, I know I've seen several of your pieces that have been dyed. Yep. Uh, all different colors. Uh, it seems like you gravitate towards the primary colors, which I do too. Uh, have you done much with blending more than two colors? Have you tried yellows and... Uh, I've done one piece where I did, uh, in some of the light areas, came back and added a, a third and even a fourth color. Uh, but I guess, you know, I'm one of those people that is either wildly conservative are conservatively wild. I don't know which way you want to call it. And so I, I really just have a tendency to go either with the solid color or the start with the black right. and then put my primary color on. Yeah. Well, know, I've seen some beautiful pieces that have had many colors on yes, them. Yes. And I've played with it a little bit. Uh, I like the idea of maybe trying to do a sunburst color mm -hmm. uh, with uh, black, red, yellow maybe a little orange or something like that. Of course, I guess with yellow and red, you're going to get some orange anyway. Yeah. I, I'm just a little, you know, I'm, I'm one of these guys, okay, I spent all this time turning it and getting it to this point. I'm always afraid that if I start messing with a lot of colors, I'll mess it up. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. I've got... Then you uh, got to go all the way back again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like to get a really good coat of my dye on there to get, you know, I like that full rich body of, of the color. The vibrance yes. that you get, yeah. yeah. And you get a lot of, for my money, with uh, chestnut spirit stains, or for that matter, even uh, artisan, it just seems like they are very vibrant colors. Yes, yes. They, they jump out and get your attention. Yeah, and I, I know some people have used like, um, the uh, clothing dye, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And mm -hmm. to me, it's just, it's not that bright. It's not right. that vibrant. Right. You know, and, and, you know, Chestnut and Artisan and some of these others, they are made specifically as a wood dye. Right. And so they're, they're made for that purpose. Okay. I think we've just about got this all covered. And you'll notice there, you can start seeing some of that chatoyance mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really starting to pop. Yeah. And, and then, it'll show even better uh, on the camera once we get the glue boost on it. Yes, I'm certain. yes. Why well, say we? 
when it's the. <laughs> as, as they used to say, you got a mouse in your pocket or yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you know, those of us that are married many times will say to our wives, you know, we need to do this in reality when we're saying, you need to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's really starting to make the grain pop. Yeah. And uh, hopefully here on the camera, you know, it's always one of those things that I don't know what things look like until I start editing because uh, I'm looking at uh, small LCD monitors. Yeah. But uh, it really, really is starting to pop. And, okay. and you can see where the black has, um, you know, filled some of those uh, gnarly, twisted areas. areas. Yeah. And that's what really makes the second die pop. You know, that's the other thing. When you get a, a piece of wood that's got a lot of figure in it and you're getting ready to turn it, you always want to try and make sure that the best figure is going to be up on top where it's most visible, especially like when you're doing the hollow forms for this. And that, that just, that's going to be a beautiful piece once I get that uh, CA on there and everything. Hi guys. Once I got home here and started editing this video, I realized that it was entirely too long for one YouTube video. So I've decided to go ahead and split this into three parts. The first part is the dyeing process, which you just saw. The second part will be how Steve applies his CA finish, or in this instance, glue boost. And then part three will be how he finishes the finish. In other words, how he uses uh, wet sanding and some polish methods to finish that piece up. So be sure and hang around for all of them, but all together it was just going to be too long for you. I'm sure it would be for me in one setting. So again, thank you very much for watching. If you would consider subscribing, click the little subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and you might also click that little bell icon so it will notify you, YouTube will notify you when I load up the next content. Thanks a lot. Enjoy part two. It's good.